Pat Barrett and welcome to Women's Radio. And you know, we cover several important subjects for our audience. One of them for women in particular, but also for men is the subject of financing, finances, and how you run your businesses with, with uh, money and so forth and so on. And a lot of energy, of course. My guest today is not only an expert in this field, but she and her organization are our new media partners. And this is called Women's Wealth Symposium. And it's gonna happen on March the 1st. My guest is Mara Feinberg Cup. And I know that you're just going to really enjoy her point of view about why she took her time to start something that is actually a pretty time consuming uh, chore as it were for women so that they could become more financially savvy. It's my great pleasure to introduce Maura Feinberg-Cuck. Thank you so much, Pat. Uh, so grateful to be a partner here with Women's Radio um, over so many years. I've been in financial industry uh, in, my, in my day job. I run a registered investment advisory practice and was an entrepreneur working for Wall Street firms for over 22 years. And there's a male dominated uh, workforce out there, mm -hmm. but also a lot of the clientele today are more than half women. Um, there's a lot more women savers, workers and so forth. And I've seen so much just in my day job over the years and gotten a lot of research and uh, know-how from other like-minded partners that have gone out to find out what makes the woman tech today. And so a lot of that has to do with money and security and investments and what better time to recognize and celebrate those achievements other than International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. So over the years, we've aligned Women's Wealth Symposium, a forum for discussion around financial wellness and literacy, really. Um, bringing the awareness uh, to the global front here for International Women's Day. Well, I, I feel really certain that women consider the safety of knowing about how to deal with finances pretty much at the top of their list. I think health probably is uh, one step higher, but the women that we're talking to really want to know that they've got a handle on finances for their personal life and also for their business lives. Almost everybody is doing something, whether it's on the not-for-profit side or the for-profit side. Now, Women's Wealth Symposium is a not-for-profit. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, I helped establish a Women's Symposium of Southern California. It's morphed over the years to be Women's Wealth Symposium, a more global uh, non government organization, a 501c3 nonprofit. And we are 100% pro bono volunteers. And what we do is get women and men from public and private spheres together to, to uplift the discussion for women's financial literacy, um, ownership. Uh, we talk about retirement planning. We talk about investing, savings, college planning. Um, real estate, how does that fit in as one of our first investments as, as women? Um, and caregiving. I mean, if you care for anyone, then you're responsible for their finances, even if you're single, you gotta care for yourself. And so more and more women are interested in this topic because we got the purse and we're the consumers. And so women are really craving how to get more information to make good decisions for themselves and their families. And the information out there a lot of times on social media or whatnot is salesy. You know, it's coming yeah. at us from an agenda perspective. And over the years, I've just found that women are not safe to discuss finances or things that really matter when they feel like there might be an alternative motive in the room. And right. so what we've done to keep a good pace on this event every year 
is no sales, 100% educational, and um, sponsorship, bringing in public and private, both small business owners, um, elected officials, big business, women in education, women in the military or veterans to talk about moving the needle forward. And a lot of that has to do with education and financial management. I, I totally agree with you. I, I'm sure people are going to be delighted. And I want to point out, I believe that uh, you're going to be doing this in person so people can come to the actual location, but you're also going to be doing it online. And um, I, I don't know if you have a way for people to ask questions in advance, if they're not going to be there in person or whatever, I'll let you speak to some of that. But why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the people who some of the experts who are going to be there to be able to help uh, your audience learn some of these uh, important aspects of finance and being literate in that. And you may want to describe, what do you mean about financial literacy? I, most people say, well, I know how to do a checkbook. I'm literate. You know, but I, I think you're talking about something that's uh, a couple of notches above that. Absolutely. I've uh, met with and, and experienced many conversations with very educated you know, professors at Long Beach you know, State or uh, women business owners that are, are very entrepreneurial, maybe specific niche in real estate, but don't have a lot of breadth and scope when it comes to the stock market or their retirement account. And so helping women, uh, creating a forum where they can ask safe questions without sales, um, helping them make more sound decisions. We need a little bit more than just going with our gut instinct. We need a little, a little more gas in the tank, a little more gumption so that we make that decision. We don't have to second guess it. So we have to consider the outcome of, of, of where we want to go and, and how do we get to achieve that? How do we gather that information to help explore all the other options? How do we weigh the possible outcomes for ourselves and, and our family situations? And whether we can live with the outcomes if we make a change or don't make a change. And so a lot of times, you know, just going back to basics, listing the pros and cons, prioritizing them, giving feed, getting feedback from trusted sources, knowing who your trusted sources are. And if you can't, uh, if you feel like you don't have enough, come to Women's Symposium. So we will be doing this live uh, live stream and we will have the ability, you can ask questions. Uh, my email is womenssymposiumoutlook.com. That's a double S in the middle, womenssymposiumoutlook.com. And we can definitely get your questions asked. I'm so excited. Some of the women that will be involved this year we have a keynote guest speaker, Trisha Ben from C-Suite Network. It's a global men's and women's organization of C-Suite professionals. And they have taken a mission and recognize that women are extremely important on the economic um, you know, stage today and have made a commitment to back women in business and so forth. Also really, really excited to have Roberta Fitzgerald. Um, she started the Black Caucus at Northwestern Mutual. She'll be talking about retirement. We will have Shelly Howard from College Ready helping families, even if it's, you know, your niece that you could help out, just learning one tip from Shelly and some of the navigation on how to qualify and get uh, capital for college and, and education in ways that may not be readily available to a Google search. Also really excited to have uh, Rhonda Hoffman and she's, geez, she's fantastic in the realm of both tax specialty and investments and she's a certified financial planner like myself. And certified financial planners are professional fiduciaries, which means they have to hold their interests out in your your best interest. And it was pretty cool to see Rhonda laid out. I think it was, um, gosh, Vogue. She was just in Vogue, two page layout. And so women are really starting to cross money, finance, leadership, what this means to me, security, value. It's very, very exciting times. So I all of these- I don't know any other um, organization out there that is doing the kind of work that you're offering here. 
I think it's a wonderful <laughs> opportunity. I, obviously, it's going to be on the West Coast at Seal Beach. Uh, this is happening on March the 1st, by the way. We'll cover the skin, but I, I, it sounds too juicy it, not to take part. It's really great, Mara, that you are going to be able to do it online as well in case people can't fly out from New York or D.C. or Detroit or wherever. Uh, but they can participate. And I, I hope that many, many, many women will take advantage of this. And uh, I can't remember the term that you use, but um, you want everyone to show up. So uh, yeah, there's, there's no barrier to entry. So if you look up Women's Wealth Symposium, Women's Symposium on Eventbrite, you can get a live LinkedIn uh, registration today at no right. barrier to cost. Um, and also we've, we've empowered over 1100 women over the years, helping them make better decisions for their families and communities. I'm excited to also say that we are starting collaborations with other women's organizations, such as yourself, women's radio, as well as lead hership global and lead her shipping in heels. And there's this big awareness that's kind of changed over the last decade with an awareness of sustainability and, and social governance um, to be aware of women's issues in business and investing. And Wall Street has made some really big pushes and um, very, very excited that, you know, I have been able to, uh, have that experience direct on Wall Street with asset management, getting research direct from JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Vanguard, Fidelity, Schwab, B Bank of New York, Mellon, you know, all of these and, and so many more asset managers and banks, very powerful institutions can see whose title is on the assets, who's trading their investments, and they know that women are a consumer force that need to be paid attention to. And it's so exciting because these companies are sharing resources with us and we are getting it out to the public here um, through Women's Wealth Symposium. Very, very cool. Well, with some luck and thanks to you, uh, we hope that we will be able to bring you uh, Trisha ahead of the, the conference. That will be a good lead in to uh, turning people on to participating. Uh, and I hope that it's extremely successful. I can't think of uh, a more important topic unless it's health, of course. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but I think that women who uh, are in business in any form at all need the information that's going to be coming out of this wonderful symposium. And I really encourage people to attend. So we will, I'm sure that we're going to be putting this information out in a number of ways. I just want to thank you so much for showing up and allowing us to participate and play with you guys and um, reach out to as many women as we can to tell them that this is a tremendous opportunity. Uh, I really don't know of anything else like it. Uh, thank you. A few final words um, in honor of International Women's Day. Um, we definitely are here to do economic development, improve women's lives through attracting and encouraging and cultivating the knowledge, bringing advanced community excellence out there mm -hmm. uh, by protecting women's rights and serving as the voice of women. Um, there's enormous innovation out there. We have real-time communication. So let's use this as a time to link and catalyze and unify women's voices and celebrate our achievements. Um, and this is how we can foster sustainability and growth for, for women for many, many decades to come. A very exciting time. Well, I'm, we're really happy to be a part of this and thank you so much. Thank you for being my guest today. We'll look forward to the actual event coming up on March the 1st. And you can get tickets at eventbrite.com. Very good. Thank you, Mara. Thank you so much.